yes. the whole um, concept of the monotheism and stuff, so I've accepted that a long time ago because I was raised in a Christian household. Okay. But like the Teachings or the history of Christianity didn't really make sense to me. Okay. So okay. Then, um, one of my friends who's Muslim now, he's like, lent me his Quran and he was just like telling me stuff. Okay. Of, uh, okay. And a lot of it made a lot of sense, especially when they bring Jesus into it. Because before then, I didn't know that Muslims um, believe in had Jesus. A, had a Yes, yes. A lot of people think we're antichrist or something like that. No, 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 no. no. I don't think Not you, but other people, they do that, yes. Well, like, I didn't know that he was, like, a prolific part of the history of Islam. Okay. But he's a prophet. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Allah. Just like all the other prophets and yes. messengers, yes. So, when I heard that, and then I was, like, reading the story, and, like, just the kind of things that, like, Jesus would do, like, um, there was the passage where, like, it says, like, he falls to his knees uh -huh. and prays. Yes. And it's, like... That made a lot of sense to me in the fact that Actually, he fell on his face, so it's even more. Because because you've got Catholics following on their knees in the church, but that's not how he prayed. Exactly. He yeah. fell on his face and only Muslims pray like this, you know? Yeah. Yes. Like yes. Christians, they pray with like, their hands. Exactly, exactly, yes. Because they had to yes. Ground, yes. The same way that Jesus yes. Like. yes. So all of that kind of stuff, it made so much sense to me. And then I can read it more and I... Okay. I've come to like... Um, realization? Realization, yes. yes. Uh, this is the truth. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so you're there. So what's stopping you from being Muslim? That's what I'm asking you. I, I don't know, because like, I, I think it's just a thing with like my kind of personality. Okay. Yes, where like, I like to be completely prepared before I do something. Well, but you have to have a, uh, like a criteria or an understanding of what you mean by completely prepared. Like, that, what is that to you? What is that to well, you? Like, obviously, like, there's, there's no Muslim that knows everything I know. We're learning until we die. It's yeah. never going to stop, yeah, basically. It's always in the yes. secret knowledge. But like, I, I feel like I need a better foundation in like knowing how to... Wouldn't, you, wouldn't it make sense to say that the criteria that Islam itself puts as enough should be enough for you as well? Now, what you think is enough, but what Islam determines enough should be enough. Wouldn't you agree? Because, hey, look, if I'm going to accept Islam, then what Islam says is enough for me to be a Muslim should be enough for me as well. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so if the religion itself says, okay, this criteria is enough for you to be Muslim, you shouldn't be saying, no, 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 I got a different criteria, but you, you want to accept this religion, you know? Yeah. So you should go with the criteria of the religion itself. Wouldn't you agree? That makes sense. Yes, so Islam is, is a very basic thing. Now, as long as you believe there's one creator worthy of worship, it's not a man, it's not a woman, it's independent, uniquely one, does not give birth, nor is born, does not have parents or grandparents or children, we're the creation of God, and there's nothing like unto Allah. Whatever you visualize in your mind you cannot visualize the creator, the maker. If you believe that, you believe in the prophets of God, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, their messengers, sent by God to connect people back to the Lord, their maker, their creator. Creator. Then according to the Islamic teaching, and you believe in the six things I'm going to say, you believe in Allah, which you already mentioned, prophets, which you already mentioned, you believe in the Day of Judgment, you believe in destiny that God de determines things, yes, yes, and you believe in um, angels, right? You, you know, right, the six, six articles of faith, and you believe in the angels of God. If you believe in these things, then according to Islam, you are not just ready, you're okay, you don't need anything else, you've got the minimum criteria of being a Muslim, you understand what I'm trying to say? So if anyone believes in that, in essence, he believes as a Muslim believes. So if there's a Muslim walking in the street, what's the difference between you and him and belief? Yeah, that's it. You get the point. That's why this is. That's why Islam says, okay, now you're ready now to take the step and become an actual Muslim, because you believe as a Muslim believes. In order for you to be a full Muslim, you need to testify shahada, which I'm sure you already heard about because you already done your research, right? So the shahada, which is a testimony of faith, and then the actions as well, which is learning how to pray step by step and all of that. Once you've done that, then now you're fully a Muslim. But you need to keep something in mind. It's like Islam is not a game; it's the truth. Which means if I don't accept it and I die, I go to hellfire. Even if you believe what you believe because you did not take the step of accepting it truly and testifying it in front of your maker and, and your creator you get what i'm trying to say so if you know this is the truth then you don't say okay i've got my own criteria my personality you say okay what does the religion say i need to do you get what i'm trying to say, I'm not trying to say that I have my own no, no i'm not saying you do <laughs> I, maybe i said that in a way that uh, no, i don't mean it in a negative way right i mean generally anyone should not have any other criteria other than what the religion itself says if you do accept it to be truly from god you get what i'm trying to say
Make sense? Make sense. So you should be Muslim now. <laughs> Let's do it. I think you're there. Don't overthink it, right? <laughs> it makes sense. If it makes sense, believe in the tenants because what I'm going to say to you to say is what you already said that you believe in. That there is one creator worthy of worship and Prophet Muhammad is messenger and servant. This is what you're going to say, right? This is how a person becomes Muslim. So you already believe that. So what you're going to repeat after me is what you already believe in your heart. My, my thing is like, to, to do it now, I feel, I feel like because I don't know No, but but that is that would happen either way. It's, it doesn't matter how many years you study, you would not know everything which is permissible and impermissible. Uh, people, look, Muslims, they've been Muslims all their life, 60, 70 years, and they come asking questions. They come and they ask me, okay, is this thing permissible to do or not permissible to do? No one knows everything. Point is, is that when you become Muslim, is the journey now of the practical journey is always going to make you really remember what is right and wrong. Until you get into practicality, you're not going to remember. Because if you just keep it at the theoretical knowledge and you never practice in your life, you will always forget. You will learn today, okay, X is wrong. Tomorrow, after two, two weeks, you're going to forget that you learned that X is wrong. But when you practice it, okay, you, you sustain from eating certain meats because you learn it's impermissible. Practice in your life, you'll never forget that you don't eat this because it's impermissible. And Allah, He does not hold you accountable for that which you do not know. So when you say sin in Islam, it's not a sin. It's a sin if you intentionally know, learn that this is a sin for us and then you do it. If you do not know you're ignorant or you sit in the beginning of your learning journey because we're all born ignorant. Allah says, He's the one who brought you from the bellies of your mothers. You do not know anything. He's given you the hearing, the eyesight, and the mind and the heart to learn. So Allah brought you as an ignorant person. All of us are ignorant when we come out, right? Then we, this journey of life, of a learning journey on a day-to-day -day basis. I always, I learn every day. Every day I figure out more things or specific details of what is permissible and impermissible. You get what I'm trying to say? So if you think that that you're gonna do something wrong when you do not know it's not a sin in Islam because you're still in the beginning of your journey and that's the whole point of us connecting you with someone so once you're connected to that person then he teaches you more of what is right and what is wrong because you might be researching something which is wrong you might be researching from the wrong source and you think this is wrong when it's not wrong or you think it's okay when it's not okay do you know what I'm to say so we all need guidance so when you become Muslim then you're able to be connected with someone who takes you on a step-by-step -step journey of teaching you what, what you need to do Make sense? Make sense. Okay. I want you to do it because you're ready, right? It's not it's not for me, it's you do it because you do it for yourself. All I'm doing is I'm providing you with the guidance from a rational perspective, right? Is that telling you look, if these are the problems, they're not problems. So that's, that's what I'm doing, right? <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Like I said, I came from a family. You want to talk, talk about the family? Yeah. You know how I know you're going to talk about the family? Because Satan brings the same point for everyone, right? Yeah. Everyone who wants to become Muslim is always the same thing, right? They're always worried about their surroundings, how people, their their uh, acquaintances, how they're going to look at them, or their direct family members, how they're going to perceive this idea. They all ask this question, right? And and I can give you videos of my channel to watch, right? See, people before they become Muslim, they always come with the same question: Why? Allah says in the Quran. Do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Satan has footsteps, certain plan or certain uh, agenda that he does with everyone. It's not he does something new with this person. New. No, no, no. It's always the same thing. He always attacks them from the idea that you're sinning, you're committing sins and this and that until you become perfect first and then become Muslim. Always this idea Satan comes with. And this idea of the family members, what are you going to do, whether people, people are going to think about you. And then the desires. That some people, okay, I don't want to leave this. I don't want to leave that. And I, I want to continue doing this, right? These are the main things Satan it always comes with to the people to try to confuse them. Point is this, Allah on the Day of Judgment, you will run away from your family members. I will run away from my family members, from my daughter, from my wife. When you see hellfire, you're going to forget everyone except yourself. You know what I'm trying to say? Even the prophets and messengers of God, they will say myself. People will come to them, they will say, uh, go to God and intercede on our behalf. 
they will say myself. So they will say, one of them will say, I, I made this specific, let's call it mistake, or, or this thing which I don't think is, is right. So I cannot go uh, in front of Allah, is myself. You go, go to another prophet, and then you go to another prophet, and then you go to, you go, I'm trying to say. Because look, on the day of judgment, Allah says, Yawma yafirul maru min akhi. When the person runs away from his brother, wa ummihi wa abihi, his mother and his father, right? Wa wa bani, his wife and his children. For each of them, he's got something in his mind that is sufficient for him to worry about anyone else. He's got himself. Am I going to end up in eternal hellfire or not? So the first thing I'm going to say is this, is your family is not going to support you in the day of judgment. My family is not going to support me in the day of judgment, right? Second thing I'm going to say is, this is a choice you make for yourself. Once you become Muslim, you've got no obligation to say anything to your family. Right? You don't need, Islam doesn't say become Muslim and go say to your family I become Muslim. There's no need for you to do that. You accept Islam, you learn a step by step. When you feel ready, you do it. Some people do it after five years. Literally, they say to their mother and father, I became Muslim after five years of them accepting Islam. Right? So it's all something that you do when you feel you're ready to do. And Islam teaches you have to be good to your parents. Yeah? Allah have ordained or decreed that you worship none other except Him. Which is the, the most important thing in Islam. And then He linked that to be good to your parents. He linked it with the most important command, right? When they become old. Allah says don't even say uff. You know when they do something you get upset, you say Pff. Right? Allah says even that, don't say it to your parents. Right? So it's not, don't say no. Don't even say off, right? And do not rebuke them or be mean towards them, right? And say to them a beautiful speech. And then lower your wing of humility to them. Right? And say, Oh Allah, my Lord, forgive them as they raised me when I was young. I was young, I had nothing, and they took care of me. They raised me. Oh Allah, forgive them, I have mercy on them because they did that. Okay? And then Allah says, If your parents are not Muslim, right? Allah says, uh, uh, If they try to make you do something which is wrong, a sin or leave Islam or do something, do not obey them in that thing, which is disobedience to God. And be their companion in, the, in this life as a favor for what they done for you. Do you get the point? So Allah says clearly in the Quran that you still have to be their companion in their life, even if they're not Muslims. Even if they try, not they're not Muslim only, they're trying to make you do wrong. They say, okay, come back to Christianity or leave this evil. They're trying to do everything that, like that. Allah says you still have to be good to them. You have to be their companion, but don't obey them in that which goes against me. Right? So your family, my advice is this, for, except Islam, be solid, solidified in your position first, your faith increases, and then when you feel you're ready, then share it with other people. Because all those when people share it in the beginning, you get negative re reviews. Because people either have a, a wrong idea about Islam, because of the media, as I'm sure you already know, right? Or they, 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 they just hear something from their friends. They've got this very negative view of Islam. And then when they hear from you Islam, straight away they link it to something which is bad, say to you, uh, they already have a big a, a negative reaction towards it, right? That's why always in the beginning, you should keep it to yourself, till you know, okay, now I'm ready, and then you can share it with them. Because that time when you share it with them, anything they will come with, you will already research and you know, okay, that, that's not true because I've already done this and this and that. I've already been Muslim for this time, you can say to them, right? And you can see the impact on my life. And what happens is Islam changes your behavior so much, is that always the parents, they notice something. The, 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 the friends, they notice, okay, something wrong about this person. He's behaving differently, right? And then sometimes they start inquiring. And then people in the field, they, they, they say to their parents that they're ready, right? So this is what I advise you to do when it comes to the family idea. Because family will always be there. Until you die, family is going to be there. Okay? So you have to make the choices at one point. The family is always going to be there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, oh, yeah that makes sense. Okay, you ready to do it? Uh, As I said, I'll leave it for you. Okay, you think so? So let's do it. It's very simple. Let's start with the English, then we'll say the Arabic. Okay? You say, I testify. It's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger and servant. And I testify that Jesus is his messenger and servant. And we say the same thing in Arabic now, okay? 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله. Let me give you a hug, man. ما شاء الله برادر. May Allah bless you, brother. ما شاء الله. Welcome to the bro. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. الحمد لله. الحمد لله. Give them a hug, brothers. ما شاء الله.